For the next part of the Tetris project, we are going to start getting user input. For now, we are only letting the user move left and right. For that, we already have the basic logic because we can move pieces down via a timer. A similar thing we want to do for left and right movement. Let's jump right in. We already have quite a bit of this stuff done. Here we are back in the code editor and I want to continue working inside of game.py. First of all, let's start on the input. This is going to happen inside of the game. More specifically, if I minimize all of the methods, I want to create another method called input. No need for custom parameters. In there, we have to check what kind of keys are being pressed. For that sort of thing, Pygame has an inbuilt functionality. It is called pygame.key.get underscore pressed. This is going to return a larger data structure that contains all of the possible inputs. This I want to store. Let's call it keys. What that allows us to do is we can check if keys, and then we can look for specific keys. For example, pygame.k underscore left would be the left key. If that is the case for now, let me simply print left. What is important now, we have to call this method. Once again, this happens inside of run. And before we're doing anything else, I want to get self.input. With that, I can run main.py. And if I hold left down, we're getting left in the bottom left. So this is working really well. That we can use to get self.tetromino once again. And then we can add another method called move horizontal. In there, I want to specify by how much we want to move. For example, if I add a one in here, we are going to move one column to the right and minus one would move to the left, which is what I want to do for K left. Then I can duplicate all of this because next up, I want to check for K underscore right. By the way, if you want to check for all of the options you can look for, and there are quite a few, you want to look at the Pygame documentation. Here's the Pygame website, and you want to go to documentation, and in there we have key. You get all of the methods associated with this, and a bit further down, we have all of the key bindings, and there are quite a few. With that, we can get input for left and right. Next up, we have to create the move horizontal method inside of a tetromino. We can do this right above move down, define move horizontal. This one needs self, and besides that, we need an amount. Inside of the method, we're going to do something basically similar compared to what we have done inside of move down. We once again want to look at every single block, meaning for block in self.blocks. We want to get the block, the position, and this time we want to get x. And to that, we want to add the amount. That is actually pretty much all we need. If I now go to main.py, run this, and press left, the piece disappears. So what happened there? The main issue is that when we are calling this input method, we are calling it on every single frame of the game. To you, you might only press the key once, but Pygame just checks the amount of time the key was pressed down. And since we have a really high frame rate, this one button press to Pygame looks like holding the button down for let's say half a second, which might trigger it 20 times, which is way too fast. We need a timer here. Fortunately, this is easily implemented. We already have a vertical move timer. Besides that, I want to create a horizontal move timer. This timer is going to be a bit simpler. We once again want to have a timer and this one is going to get a move wait time. This move wait time we're getting from the settings, there we have move wait time. We can only trigger this button every 200 milliseconds. We just have to figure out how to use it. Now we are already updating it because we have this timer update method. So all we really have to do inside of the input method we first of all want to check if the timer is not active, which we can do with if not self dot timers, then the horizontal move timer. And there we want to check if it is active or not. And only if it is not active, we want to allow this kind of input. However, once we get this kind of input, 
we want to call self.timers once again, and we want to only check the horizontal move time. And this we now want to activate. This, by the way, we have to do for both left and right. If I now run my NotPy again, we get a piece, and if I press on left, we are moving one column to the left. If I press right, we are also moving left. So I probably made a mistake. Ah, when this is right, this should be a positive one, not a negative. If we now run all of this again, I can move right, I can move left, and this feels much better. Cool, I'm very happy with this. And I guess I should mention that we want to have two separate timers for the vertical and the horizontal move. If you ever played Tetris, you probably had this scenario where you have, let's say, a couple of existing blocks that look something like this. And the block you're currently working with is somewhere here. And you really want to move it one column to the left before it actually finishes the movement. This we can only do if we have separate timers for vertical and horizontal movement. If they were the same, you could only move on a downward movement, which basically meant that any kind of movement would be a diagonal. If you wanted to move to the right, you couldn't do it. You would have to move down and right, which is very often not what you want to do. That covers horizontal movement. Now for this part, I didn't include an exercise, although what I would really recommend you guys to do is to look at the timer and make sure you understand it. The timer class isn't actually that complicated, only about 30 lines of code. But when we are using it, it can be a bit daunting. Why does this work along with this and this? Definitely make sure to have a look at this before you continue. If you understand it, you have a really good understanding of how to create custom timers in Python or in, well, any programming language.